We're now going to spend a little bit of time talking about scanning planes and image orientation. If you're not comfortable with these types of scanning planes, I would strongly encourage that you spend some time looking at Netter and become a little more familiar with them. In ultrasound, the most common planes that are used are longitudinal, transverse, and coronal, but it is really important that we understand all of these body planes and the terminology because it helps us interpret our ultrasound images and their orientation. If you don't know what words like proximal and distal means, if you don't know the difference between anterior and posterior, superficial or deep, then I would strongly encourage you to spend some more time getting to know what those words are because it's going to to make understanding an ultrasound image a lot more difficult. Now when it comes to image orientation, the image on the left hand side of the screen is a longitudinal image of the kidney. This means that the image orientation is superior, inferior, anterior, and posterior. The image on the right hand side of the screen is a transverse image of the kidney. If I wanted to go from the longitudinal plane to the transverse plane, what I need to do is turn my transducer 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So here on the left hand side of the screen you can see what the image looks like. To get to the transverse plane, I'm going to rotate my transducer so that it's going towards, so that my fingers are going to move towards the patient's belly button, and so that my image or my transducer now looks like this. And that will give me this transverse slice of my kidney. When I look at this image, the image orientation is still anterior and posterior, but now it's right and left. It is extremely important that you note just because something is above something else on ultrasound. So here, this is above, this right here is actually an image, it's a transverse picture of the right kidney. So this is the liver sitting on top of my kidney. Just because the liver is above my kidney, it does not mean that it is superior. Although when we look at this longitudinal image, it actually is superior. Um, you need to remember that just because something is above, it means that it is anterior or it is more superficial. It is the first layer that our ultrasound beam is going to interact with, which is why the kidney ends up being behind or below that liver. I hope that kind of makes sense. So this is anterior, which is closer to the front of my stomach, and this is posterior, which is closer to my spine. This is not superior and inferior. Now when we describe an ultrasound image, we'll always describe an organ and we'll describe any abnormalities that we find. When we're describing an organ, we'll describe the echogenicity, the echotexture, and the borders. When we describe an abnormality, we can describe where the abnormality is, whether it's focal or diffuse, the echotexture of the abnormality, we can describe whether the borders are well-defined, are they smooth or irregular, um, we can explain whether or not it has a mass effect on surrounding organs, and we can discuss whether or not there's blood flow that is seen on Doppler ultrasound. We can talk about the components of this mass by describing whether we think it's solid, um, whether it's cystic, simple, or complex. So let's practice describing some images here. Um, we have a transverse image of the liver. So when we are describing an image, it doesn't matter whether or not you've done the scan before, if you've looked at these images before, all you need to do is break this down so that it is methodical and organized. When we describe an image, we'll first describe the image orientation, we'll identify the organ, we'll describe that organ, and then we'll also describe any pathology that is seen within it.
So the first thing that I'm going to say is that I have a transverse image of the liver. I know that it's a transverse image of the liver because I have scanned many livers before. And please do not stress, I'm not going to give you an image of something that you haven't studied in this paper and then ask you to just know what the orientation is. I appreciate that that comes with practice. But, um, so we have a transverse image of the liver. Um, and I can say that the liver echotexture is homogeneous. I would say that it appears to be slightly more hyperechoic, and I know that because when I'm looking at my ultrasound image of my liver, I can appreciate here this looks like what would be fatty sparing. So the rest of the liver gets infiltrated with fat, and then there might be some tissues or some areas of tissue that don't get infiltrated with fat, and you can really appreciate that there. But in order to be 100% confident, what I would want to do is have an image that compares the um, echogenicity between the liver and the kidney to demonstrate how much brighter the liver is than the renal cortex. Those two should actually be quite similar with the renal um, cortex being slightly more hypoechoic. Um, than the liver parenchyma, but if there's a huge difference, it's a good indicator that the liver is abnormally echogenic. The next thing that I note is that within the liver, there is a focal cystic lesion. One thing that I would want to describe is um, the location of it within the liver. So in the liver, when we describe pathology, we actually use segments. Now, I can't just on one image identify which segment it is exactly but I would say that it is likely in segment seven or eight and I would say that within this cystic mass there does not appear to be um, any uh, septations it is anechoic which means that there are absolutely no echoes within it and posterior to the cystic lesion I can see acoustic enhancement all of these um, descriptions match the description for a simple cyst within the liver. The things that I would want to do in addition is take measurements in two planes. So I would do, well, three planes. I would have a transverse and a longitudinal image of the cystic structure, and I would measure the length, the width, and the height of the lesion. And I would also want to put on color Doppler to demonstrate that there's no obvious blood flow um, internally. So now we'll go on to the next example. So let's practice on another image. Um, this mass was a mass that was found in someone's groin. And again, just because we haven't scanned this before doesn't mean we don't know how to describe it because we'll just break it down um, to make it logical and simple. So the first thing we'll want to do is identify the plane in which we're imaging in, which is longitudinal and we want to identify where in the body it is. It's in the upper right thigh. The other thing that I would want to do is describe where in the thigh, as in where in the tissue, is it. It looks as though it might be within the muscle layer, um, so it'd be considered an intramuscular mass. Um, that just kind of comes with experience. I can see this striated appearance posterior to um, where the mass is, which is what muscle tends to look like on ultrasound. However, based on this one image, I wouldn't be 100% confident. I would want additional images in the transverse plane as well. Um, and then when it comes to describing the image, we want to describe the mass itself. So when we look at the borders, I would consider those quite well defined. It'd be pretty easy to put um, calipers on that quite confidently. And then when I look at the internal components of that mass, I would be calling it complex. So along with these echogenic portions, there's a few that are hypoechoic, but it looks like there's some low level echoes. And then there also appears to be a few cystic type components as well. Um, additional information that I would want to have is again using color Doppler to demonstrate whether or not there is any blood flow.
When it comes to creating or coming up with a differential diagnosis on an image like this, there's some additional information we would want to have. For example, the patient history. Has the patient recently had any trauma? Have they had surgery? Because if they are, then this could be a collection. It could be a hematoma or it could be an abscess. If they haven't had trauma or surgery, then I would want to know how long ago this patient noticed the lump and whether or not they have any history of any other type of disease or cancer. I would also want to know if the lump was causing them any pain and whether or not it's been getting bigger. Think about it. If my patient told me that they felt this lump for the first time a month ago and that it's grown quite quickly, um, what am I most likely going to think it is? It's probably something more suspicious than it is benign if it's growing quickly because that's what cancer does. It is a fast growing um, tumor and it takes on the blood supply from other organs. Um, if my patient said that they have felt it and it stayed quite consistent for the past year, I might not think it's something as serious, but again, that doesn't mean that it's not. Ultrasound is really good at describing what we see, but we cannot be 110% um, positive when it comes to our diagnosis. In order to be positive, you need to do a biopsy of the tissue. Now, when we look at some tissue, there are tissues that we expect to be heterogeneous and that's quite normal. For example, the image on the right hand side of your screen is an image of normal breast tissue. Breast tissue is made up of multiple lobules and each lobule or between each lobule you can see the connective tissue and the fat that helps support, um, provide support and structure for the breast. So when we do an ultrasound of the breast, it is normal for it to have that heterogeneous appearance. If, however, we look at this image on the left, um, that's an image of the thyroid and that is quite abnormal. Our normal thyroid is homogeneous and smooth in architecture and usually measures between four to six centimeters in length and the AP or the anterior posterior measurement tends to be less than two centimeters. So anterior to posterior, that's my AP measurement, is going to be less than two centimeters. The image on our left hand side here of this um, thyroid is actually of a multinodular goiter. So it's a thyroid that's full of all of these different nodules and it makes it really hard for us to even be able to put calipers on any one of these nodules. The borders of the thyroid become quite large and irregular um, and nothing about this is really smooth or normal looking. I just really wanted to provide you with an example of what normal heterogeneous tissue can look like versus what patho pathological um, heterogeneous tissue can look like. Earlier on in the lecture, I had talked about the mass effect. So mass effect is the effect of a growing mass that results in a secondary problem due to the mass pushing or displacing the surrounding tissue. When a mass displays the mass effect, it is usually a telling sign that the mass is more likely to be malignant than it is benign. If we're comparing the two renal masses, which we can see here, the one on the left-hand side has pushed the boundaries of the renal capsule versus the mass on the right-hand side of our screen is not affecting the kidney capsule or the renal sinus. The image on the left-hand side of the screen is demonstrating a renal cell carcinoma, where the image on the right-hand side is demonstrating an angiomyolipoma. So you can really appreciate this distorted look of the renal capsule, whereas here the renal capsule is completely contained and maintained and this little echogenic mass is doing nothing to impact um, the rest of the kidney. So remember when you describe an ultrasound image to just break it down. Start out by describing the organ you're looking at and the orientation of that image. Describe the normal parts of the image before going into the pathology.
when we describe pathology, you can comment on the location of the pathology within that organ. You also want to comment on the borders of the pathology, whether or not it's focal or diffuse, and if there is blood flow that is demonstrated within the mass or along the periphery of the mass. You also will likely want to comment on the measurements of the mass if you have that information. Um, and whether or not that mass is creating any type of mass effect on that organ that it is found in. Please remember that if you don't practice talking out loud about ultrasound images and practice describing them, you'll continue to struggle to use the terminology correctly. Practice really does make perfect. So that is everything that we have for today, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.